confirmation show dogs. Now, it's different than a pet where you want the dog to behave, you want the dog to go and, and just be polite and listen to you and, and be safe around people. In a show dog, you, you really want those things, but your priority is that that dog goes out. It's, it has to be appropriate with people, meaning the judge has to be able to go over it. It can't be wimpy because it's not going to show pretty. It has to actually have more attitude around other dogs. So your dog has to walk in the ring and say, I am the best dog here, by the way. The problem with that is many people who show, that is the only priority they have. Now, it's not the only, it's not really their only priority, but it's the one they work at the most. So we have, how old is he? A year old. He's a year old. He was one of the ones that came here last year. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. All right, this is a year old Minpin. Very handsome boy. Very handsome boy. We have Johnny over here. Pretty girl. We have Abby. Now, how old is Johnny? She is just turned seven. Seven. Year old. Just turned year old. Yeah. Okay. How old's Otis? Two. Two. And then over there, we have Kodiak. He's a Finnish champion. And the beauty of the Finnish champion who's been raised, first of all, to be a pet, is he can go back in being a pet after he's done with his show career. How many big whole male Airedales that have been finished as a champion would come into a room of dogs like this and lie down? Not very many. That is such a nice dog. Now, he's, it's kind of a unique thing because his owner actually lives in Washington. He lived in Alaska, moved to Washington, and he bought the dog, had the dog shown, so he's finished. But he's been here after his show career, been here for oh, about a year and a half, maybe two, and the guy's still in Washington, the dog is still here. So he's kind of, he's a good dog to start with, but he's a wonderful pet. So anyway, he's a new dual champion. Lucy over here was a show dog. Katie. Or Katie. Oh, new. sisters. What are you going to do? They do that. Sisters. But Katie was shown. And then before she finished her championship, I think she had three points yet to go. Before she finished her championship, Sarah allowed me to take her and Mark latched onto her. That was the last we ever saw her. What a career. Man. Yeah, what a career. So that dog's gone from show dog to service dog. And that's a huge gap. And that is absolute living proof that it absolutely can be done. What for you and Sarah? Well, it's it's. But Mark, if you didn't do what you were told, nursing home. Guess what? You wouldn't have that dog. Now, when you come down to it, the show championship lasts a short time. While you're showing them, lasts a short time. So it really is important that, and Joan does this with her dogs. It's really important that she gets them out. Because eventually, your goal is that that dog can go somewhere, can do something else. And that's why it's important as a young dog that even the show dogs learn to be normal dogs. Their priority is not 
not showing, that's yours. What she's doing is warming this dog up. The line's just a bit short, but every time that dog walks into a new situation, this dog is just getting his career started. He's, he's really had a very, he's been away at boarding school, so he's had very limited experiences in the social world. So he's, he's two. He's just, and I've had him since he's about 14 weeks old. Happy, oh my goodness. He's never had a fight with another dog. He's never, he's never chased a cat. He's never done anything. That doesn't mean he's not interested. So this dog right now, he is really liking the work. So when he comes in here, he is happy. He's not scared, he's happy. We can always take that out of them. We can't put it back in. The only requirement right now is that Zach never tightens the lead. Good job. And he stays attentive to whoever's got a hold of him. Now that long, that short line is very difficult. Good job. He's doing all right. Oh, he's doing fine. But you really want to get it in his head. See, that's not really far enough. So if you had a dog that only would come from that distance, oh, all right? Now, let me take, what's his name? Freddy. 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 Come on, Fred. Easy. <laughs> See, when Freddy gets that much farther away, he thinks he's loose. No way. I was so proud of Gary and Zach the, with, last Thursday we were in the park. He had a 30-foot line on that dog. He was walking on the sidewalk, and Zach chose to be next to him. It was the most beautiful picture you have ever seen, just like Katie with Mark. Who's that? Good job. So the longer the line, actually the more control you have. Good boy. So this dog has got to choose to keep his attention on Carolina, not be held there. Good boy. See, now there's no correction. Good boy. On the other hand, if he walks up, take him over to Joan. Just hang on to him, Joan. And then when she calls him, you're going to let him go. Hey, big boy. Easy. How are you? Good, easy. So now if he's rude to Joan... Carolyn can correct him. Zach, come on. Good boy. Good, come on. That's it. Good guy. Good, easy. It's very difficult to raise a dog like this sometimes in a home because we want them to behave. But that's like taking the sense of humor out of a child. Yeah, you can have an obedient child, but then they're not an achiever. They're limited. They're afraid to try things. Afraid to make a mistake. We don't want that. The last thing Gary wants in a dog is a boring, dead-headed dog that doesn't like to do anything. Gary's a fun guy. He's already figuring out a seat on the motorcycle. Okay. So he's immature in his training, but he's very mature in his social skills. Thank you. Okay, now pick it up and just do some with me, do some sharp right turns. This is exactly what I was talking about yesterday. Is you got to have that dog. Good with me. As especially a show dog, you need that attitude. Do some um, sharp right turns. Just, you know, like, there you go. There you go. Good boy. Good with me. Oh! With me is a little distance to your body. Good with me. That's it. Good boy. One correction. You got him where you want. So the width thing brings them down a notch. Good with me. This is your normal everyday walking. Now, wait. There you go. Now shorten your line up like you're going to show it. Now what's wrong with that? Are the 
because then he's neutered and it's not really show quality. But look at it. There's your attitude. It's not the training that gets that. It's the relationship. Oh, we got us a show dog. You wait. Good. Wait. You wait. Look at you. Isn't that cool? Look at you. Good boy. That's the first time he's ever done that. <laughs> but he understands the words. So we need to spend more time teaching them to be confident and love to be with us than actually working on precise skills. Good boy. Oh, really, really slow down. Oh, he can go slow too. Oh, when you say with me, with me. it oh, means boy. whatever speed. Now, which is handier? Good the show? Yeah. Or all this other show? Good job. Good job. That's it. Good You've good. never done this. With me. You think you're crazy, but okay. Alright, you're miraculously healed. Woohoo! <laughs> Good job. Good with me, Zach. Good boy. Okay, the cramps out of your leg. Now you're back at the show. So this goes into come on. Come on. Come on. So come on is Good happy, boy. outgoing, fun. Good job. That's okay, good. with me goes to with me, Zach. Nice with me. Oh, Good boy. you can have both. Good boy. It's really sad because there's a lot of show people who do not want to train their dog. They're afraid it's going to lose attitude. Uh, no, it allows them to relax. But when you do ask for the attitude, you've got it. Nice. Good with me, Zap. Oh, hi. Wait. Oh, wait. Now, just stop. Now, this dog has had very little training. The only training he's had, you've seen in class, Thursday night. It's the only thing. That takes so little effort once the dog has the right attitude. It's the relationship that gets you what you want. That's the perfect example of it, right? That anybody who's ridden horses, the last thing you want is this plotty, boring, nothing horse. You want that attitude. It doesn't cost any more to feed a really pretty one than it does a dud. It doesn't cost any more to walk a dog with some style than it does a dog that is worried and afraid to take up space. Sadly, in many cases, people are taught to fight to keep that dog next to them. Terriers are given such a horrible reputation because people don't understand this. If you took that dog, that dog, and hold them on a short, tight lead, all they're going to do is fight you. Because the dog wants some space. Can you imagine this little opinionated soul as a child? He's a little bit on the bossy side. He's got attitude to burn, and you're going to walk him, come on baby, right here, and he's not to go see anybody, and he's not to do anything, he's just to stay by your side. Now this is for pottying, this is for eating, this is for what? This is at the fair, this is shopping, what kid would want this? And he's a year old, so he's 20. He's a 20-year-old young man. What 20-year-old would want to walk holding hands with mommy and have this be the limit of his fun? It's a hard concept because people want to teach them to walk next to him. You teach him attitude, 
And then you establish what the rules for that attitude are. You never have a problem. Without arguing with anybody, without going after other dogs, without... Audrey's here. She's not, she has no idea what we do here. So this is her introduction. <laughs> what do you think? Good. All right. So we want the same thing in all these dogs. It was really funny. I was at a dog show one time, and I put my dog in a pen, an exercise pen, and I started to walk away to find a handler, find the handler. And there was a judge who was Lydia Hutchison. She was, um, she had her Karens there, and she said, your dog's out. <laughs> and Murphy had climbed over the top of the <laughs> X-Pen, of course, and he's loose. I said, Murphy, with me. And he just came. And she said, that's a terrier. Yeah. Now that probably saved his life. It was at Gray's Lake, big fairgrounds. He could have run up on a big dog and gotten eaten. He could have started a fight with somebody and killed a little fluffy dog. He could have run off, chasing something. He could have gotten himself in all sorts of trouble. Instead, he was looking for me. That's what the long line gets you. Not you. See, he's trying to sneak away. Ha ha! Good dog. Good dog. They need to be comfortable in their skin. They need to be comfortable away from you. They need to understand how the world should work. How to function in our world, just like kids. If we take this kid in and we encounter this kid, how do they know what to do? He's never seen a min pin before. Min pin's never seen a light one before. Uh -uh. Good boy. You're fine. So if we let them learn by trial and error, that's what we have. Accidental lessons. If we deliberately take that dog out and expose them to situations, we can predict how that dog will be then. We have no questions how he will be because the important stuff is already programmed in. Got a question. Sure. From where you started this dog uh -huh. till today, how far, how long has it taken to get that in out? Well, first of all, we've allowed him to grow up with no pressure. If if a person who wants an emotional support dog, service dog, whatever, is gonna take this, this dog cannot go in and frustrate that person. So if a person is depending on this dog, yeah, what is gonna be? well, he may be. I mean, let's face it, all of our dogs, whether you actually need a dog or not, are officially emotional support dogs. They all make us feel better. They all bring a smile to our faces. I got that rotten little chihuahua. At night I give it, well, she's not, he's not up there right now. But I go ahead and sit in the recliner, and he jumps in my lap. A little one-eyed chihuahua. You're so wonderful. I just love you. He makes you feel better. So whether it's an official title or whether it's just a dog that's your personal dog, that's what the dog wants is that connection. He doesn't care about the dog show. He doesn't care about anything except you. Okay, so... Every dog was bred to be a service dog. Every dog. And by starting them all that way, where you could go anywhere with this dog. So whether this is the dog for a particular person, Mark went through four different dogs. Because I didn't want him to, you know, he would fall in love with a dog. He'd fall in love with a breed. John Chapman. 
Yeah, yeah turbo drivers. <laughs> <laughs> it was only when I turned Wiley loose and Wiley came right here in Mark's face that you realized maybe a German Shepherd wasn't quite the right one. That's right. So the problem the problem happens when people do what the dog wants to do or what they want to do. So we go out and teach the dog to challenge and tug. I would, okay, tell him he's, no, no, tell him he's good and tell him, come on. Walk back over there. Don't correct him for seeing another dog. He just has to pay attention. There. Now just tell him, come on. You don't want to set him up. To, that was the same thing. You don't want to correct him for that. You want to just tell him, come on. And then you haven't told him it's wrong. Great names are bad. Now you go over and tell her. He's the Abby. He doesn't need to be there. He just needs to see that you're not afraid of that great day. And you're not afraid of great day people either, are you? So why don't you shake hands? Hi, good morning. Hi there. Now, just like a respectful child, he has no business going up to strangers and asking for attention. So when people get a dog, they raise it. They give people treats so the dog goes forward to get food from a stranger. Their kids are standing there watching that going, what? When they raise the dog to struggle at the door to keep it from running out, you've just given the dog a new game. They take the dog to a dog park and let it run and wrestle and fight with every other dog there is. And then they wonder why the dog drags you to get to other dogs. And I'll guarantee you all it takes is one nasty dog, and you've got a dog that doesn't like other dogs. So what happens is all those obnoxious dogs, they tug with them, they wrestle with them, they pick on them, and then when they get the adult dog, usually between eight months and a year, the dog ends up at the Humane Society or in rescue. And that's when nice people want one.